We have some bad news. Uh, if, you, if there is a major coronavirus outbreak at your job, your employer will no longer have to inform the government. Uh, so now, normally, how, how it's supposed to work uh, is that employers are legally required to notify OSHA whether, uh, whenever a worker ends up hospitalized due to a work-related injury or an illness. Uh, now, that's how it's supposed to work. The Trump administration, however, has changed how it's supposed to work and is reinterpreting some rules which will allow workplaces to not have to report coronavirus outbreaks on the job. Meaning, not only will we not know about major outbreaks, but we'll also not be able to intervene to stop them. And if you're wondering how relevant this is to stopping the spread, keep in mind that some of the worst COVID-19 uh, outbreaks happened in workplaces like meatpacking plants and nursing homes. So this, these rules, changing and reinterpreting these rules is going to mean disaster for trying to get coronavirus under control. Uh, in fact, uh, Debbie Berkowitz, former OSHA official now with the nonprofit National Employment Law Project, said this is going to lead to a further spread of COVID-19 at work and out into the public. It means the agency will never be able to find out where there are serious outbreaks and will never be able to hold employers accountable, which is why, of course, the, the Trump administration is trying to do this. So let me give you some of the details of what's going on. The Trump administration is looking to undo a rule issued during the Obama administration, shocker, uh, which states that whenever a worker is hospitalized, suffers an amputation, or loses an eye, the employer has to report the incident to OSHA within 24 hours, by phone or email. Or when an employer learns of a work-related death, OSHA must be notified within eight hours. So now hospitalization, of course, happens a lot with coronavirus. And so, of course, with coronavirus, and there were updated guidelines as well uh, on that saying, if you, you know, if you have people at your workplace that test positive for coronavirus, you also have to let people know in the government. Now, the updated guidelines, however, said, uh, and this is from the Trump administration issuing this on September 30th, made clear that the rule would not apply to COVID-19 cases. Uh, it pointed to a line in the regulation that says you must only report the event to OSHA if it occurs within 24 hours of a work-related incident. So under the administration's interpretation, workplace uh, work-related incident means an exposure to coronavirus in the workplace. And of course, as we know, we know how the virus works. Symptoms just don't show up within 24 hours. So for the employer to be uh, to have to be um, required to notify OSHA, a worker would have to be exposed to COVID-19, get sick and hospitalized all within a 24 hour period. That's not how it works. And they know that they know that's not how it works. They're not stupid. What they want to do is they want to hide the fact that workers are getting sick because for them, the companies, it costs too much to protect them, obviously, and they don't want to be held liable if their workplace gets people sick. And so if you don't report those, well, I mean, then you can just basically ignore that an outbreak is happening. So now, remember, in, in every uh, coronavirus stimulus deal uh, that, is, uh, that the Republicans have been trying to pass, they have put in language to protect corporations from liability for coronavirus. Uh, and so this is one more way, I think, for them to try to avoid that. Peg Seminario directed the AFL-CIO's workplace safety program before retiring last year, said OSHA's earlier interpretation was the correct one, and these changes are wrongheaded. She said, quote, it makes absolutely no sense for the reporting of COVID-19. But it does make sense if you're trying to protect corporations from liability and also if you're an administration that is relying on uh, the appearance of not having new cases of coronavirus to help your political ambitions. It's one of those things, and it goes back to Donald Trump saying, well, let's slow the testing down because if uh, the reason that we have bigger numbers is because we're testing more. Well, it's the same kind of thought. Like, ah, all these places are reporting coronavirus infections. So why don't we have them to uh, stop reporting those infections? And therefore, uh, it won't look so bad 
the numbers won't be high. The numbers will go down because nobody's reporting it. That's what they're trying to do. Now, furthermore, David Michaels, who led OSHA under President Obama, said the Trump administration is misinterpreting the rule uh, his team had enacted. He said the new policy fits the Trump administration's broader pattern of denial during the pandemic. If you aren't aware of infections, then the infections are just not happening. Quote, it's an outrageous distortion. This is OSHA saying they don't want to know where outbreaks are happening. And then, of course, this new policy has had impacts. Uh, in May, o OSHA issued a fine against a Georgia nursing home that had waited two weeks to notify the agency that six of its workers had been hospitalized due to coronavirus. But the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, which was first to detail the recent policy change, reported last week that OSHA dropped that citation as soon as they released the new guidance. So, so by the way, every Republican... And conservative that is pissed off, like, oh, look, Andrew Cuomo didn't tell anybody about the uh, coronavirus cases in the nursing homes, and they packed the nursing homes. And the same people, you know, who are mad about Whitmer, uh, well, your guy, Donald Trump, just said, oh, nursing homes, if a bunch of people get infected, we don't have to tell anybody. They don't have to tell you, so we don't have to know. What the hell? What the hell? And by the way, um, journalists, advocates, all these people will not be able to know the true numbers now. And I, and I love how conservatives have this conspiracy theory that oh, the Democrats are overinflating the numbers. Uh, they're, they're putting out fake numbers. And now you have those same people that are putting out fake numbers that aren't representative of what's really going on with coronavirus, the actual coronavirus numbers, of how many people are getting infected. So it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and, and not just ridiculous, but it's also dangerous. It's, it's completely unacceptable. Super unacceptable. They don't care about you. If you're a worker, if you're a regular person, they want to send you back to work, even if, you're den, if your workplace is a den of coronavirus, which increases the likelihood that you'll get it, you'll get sick from it. And not only will you get sick, but you also spread it to your families and to your community as well. But hey, at least a corporation will be protected because Republicans say we must protect corporations at all costs. What can I say? Republicans are a death cult. Now, it's only uh, Democrats, by the way, that are raising the alarm because it actually does impact working people. Uh, but for Republicans, look, they don't care. They don't care. They don't give a damn if COVID spreads. In fact, they're pretty open about wanting to infect everyone in order to get so-called herd immunity, which be which without a vaccine would be an absolute disaster. They are a pro-corporate death cult, and people need to see them for what they actually are. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf, or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.